okay so, so today we will discuss uniform continuity and absolute continuity continuity okay so let's see the first uniform we have already seen the continuity definition if we uh, let A which is a subset of R and let F a mapping from A to R set of all real numbers A to R uh, then the following two condition then following uh, two statement following statements are equivalent. Uh, equivalent that is the first statement is that f is continuous f it continuous at every point uh, u belongs to a and second is uh, given f sin r greater than 0 uh, and and u which is an element of A, they are each a delta which depends on epsilon as well as the point u and greater than 0 such that for all x, for all x uh, belonging to A, for all x such that x belongs to A and satisfy the condition mod x minus u is less than delta which is which depends on epsilon and u then the mod of f x minus f u is less than epsilon. So, um, this we have discussed already a function is continuous at a point u if for a given epsilon there existed delta such that mod of f x minus f u less than f sin r whenever mod of x minus u less than delta. And here we have seen that this delta depends on the point. If I change the point, the correspondingly delta will change. Okay. So, what this shows? This shows the function f changes its behavior when the point changes. Maybe the behavior suppose for some point the function is very slowly in changing the uh, their values and for some near to some point it changes very rapidly. For example, if we take the sin 1 by x when x is not equal to 0, if we look this function then this function is changing very rapidly at when the point is very close to 0. It goes very up and down from plus 1 minus 1 to plus 1 and very rapidly it goes. So, we are interested in such type of functions where the change is smooth say. Okay. Or we can say that we are interested the delta which is independent of u and that leads the concept of uniform continuity. Okay. So, the function we say it is continuous point wise here, but point wise means delta will depend on the u. So, we wanted a definition which in which the delta is independent of u and that leads to the definition or concept of uniform continuity. So, let us see <laughs> the definition of uniform continuous function continuous function. <laughs> Let A be a non empty subset of R and let f is a mapping from a to r a to r we say f is uniformly continuous f is set to be uniformly continuous uniformly continuous on the set a on the set A, if for each 
epsilon for each epsilon greater than 0 there is a delta which depends only on epsilon a positive delta which depends only on epsilon and independent of the point u of a such that such that if x and u are any two arbitrary point of a or any number or any number or any number satisfying satisfying the condition mod of x minus u is less than delta depends on epsilon only then mod of f x minus f u is less than epsilon. So, what this shows is that a function is said to be uniformly continuous over the set A. Remember when we say the function is continuous then we can say function is continuous at a point. So, at a point we can identify a delta which depends on, but when we say the function is uniformly continuous then saying uniform continuous at a point is a meaningless it will be continuous over a set. So, a function is said to be uniform continuous over the set A we mean that if for any epsilon greater than 0 if we are able to get a delta which is independent of the points of the set A such that if whenever we pick up any two arbitrary point set in the delta neighborhood of this then corresponding fluctuation f x minus f u will remain less than epsilon the value of this. For example, if we take the function f x equal to say 2 x okay, and this f x equal to 2 x for all x belongs to say real number r. Okay. Now, if I consider mod f x minus f u where the u and b are the point let x and u these are the points in r okay, and satisfy that condition. Uh, so, consider this this is equal to 2 x minus 2 u which is equal to 2 times x minus u. So, if we take if we choose if we choose uh, delta which depends on say epsilon u as epsilon y 2. So, obviously, this delta is independent of u because this is basically we are taking delta to be epsilon y 2 whatever the u may be. So, it is independent of this. So, if I take delta this then obviously, this part for all epsilon greater than 0 then this condition holds less than epsilon for all x and u belongs to r such that mod of this x minus u less than delta is it okay and this is independent of delta is independent of the u and positive quantity so this function will be considered f x equal to 2a we can say it is uniformly continuous over the entire real line over the entire line okay however there are all the functions which are only continuous but not uniformly for example if we take the function uh, there so f x equal to 2 x is uniformly continuous over any set a which is subset of r over any subset of r okay or in entirely <coughs> now take a function g x say 1 by x for x belonging to the set A which is the set of those points of real number such that x is positive. Okay. Now, we claim that this uh, function g is continuous, but not uniformly over a not uniform continuous at each point continuous at each point 
of A, but not uniformly. Let us see how. Uh, let us consider g x minus g a g u g x minus g u this is equal to what 1 by x minus 1 by u which is the same as u minus x over u x ok. Uh, now, if u belongs to this if u belongs to a suppose ok u belongs to a is given we there we wanted to test the continuity is given. So, if we take delta which depends on u as the infimum of u by 2 and u square epsilon by 2. Uh, so, let epsilon is greater than 0 be given here we let us slide let epsilon is greater than 0 be given and let us pick up the point u at which the continuity is tested. So, now choose the delta is this. So, when you take this delta then then if mod of x minus u less than delta okay, and delta which is depending on epsilon and u then I can choose so, suppose first it is less than u by 2 then so picked up take delta as u by 2. So, what happen is this shows that x minus u is less than u by 2 or this implies that x lies between 3 by 2 u and half u because x minus u is less than u by 2. So, it becomes less than 3 by 2 and then u minus x is uh, that is x minus u is u minus u by 2 x greater than this. So, this is greater than. So, it lies bound with this. Therefore, the bond for this therefore, 1 by x can be x is greater than u by 2. So, 1 by x will be greater than get uh, sorry uh, x is less than. So, 1 by x. So, 1 by x uh, is less than because it will be uh, x is greater than this. So, 1 by x will remain less than 2 by u from here. Once it is 2 by u then the condition in the condition which we have taken as g x minus g u. In this case what we get mod of this this is less than equal to uh, u minus x mod over u x. So, u into x x means 1 by x. So, it is 2 into y u. So, it becomes the 2 by u square into u minus x. Now, further choose delta to be this thing u square epsilon by 2. Okay. So, once I am taking delta to be this another one I am taking this. So, what we get is from here this shows that this part mod of g x minus g u is less than equal to delta mean mod of x u minus x is less than delta. So, this is less than 2 by u square into u square by 2 epsilon that is epsilon. Okay. So, this holds that if x minus u is less than delta for all such x then g o u x minus g u will be less than epsilon and this is true. So, this shows that g is continuous at u belongs to a clear, but here the delta which you are choosing is coming with depends on u with depends on u is positive quantity. Okay. But what happens to this? Uh, uh, sorry, this is not. This is uh, each individual delta is positive when u is taking to be there. But when you take the infimum value of this, when you take the delta as the infimum of all such, then what happens to that? Infimum of delta here, delta depends on epsilon u. 
so g is point wise continuous point wise continuous but what is the infimum of all such deltas delta infimum of all such delta which depend on epsilon and u and u is greater than 0 the infimum of value of this is coming to be 0 why because each delta each delta here is nothing but either u by 2 or u square by 2 so u is greater than 0 so each delta is greater than 0 but when you take the infimum value of <coughs> this delta over u then this infimum will come out to be 0 so we are not getting a delta which is greater than 0 so for a given f sin r greater than 0 we cannot get delta cannot get delta which depends only on f sin r depends only on f sin r and greater than 0 such that condition mod of g x minus g u is less than f sin r provided mod of x minus u less than delta hold this we cannot get therefore g is not uniformly continuous continuous okay so we have seen the example where the function is continuous uh, point wise and the function is uniformly continuous now to show the uniform continuity we require the delta we are independent of the point over the entire set so that's not that uh, easy so what we we can develop the test which will give the at least sufficient criteria when the function is not uniformly continuous so we will just uh, state those results without proof the criteria for the non uniform continuity so and the non uniform non uniform continuity criteria this will be needed so proof we are just dropping but it is can be easily done with the help <laughs> previous knowledge so let a be a non empty subset of r and let f is a mapping from a to r then the following following statements are equivalent are equivalent the first statement says f is not uniformly continuous uniformly continuous on a second statement says that there exist there exist n f sin l not greater than 0 such that such that for every delta greater than 0 there are points there are points say x depends on u uh, u uh, x depends on say delta not x depend on delta and then uh, u depend on delta in a in a such that such that the mode of x delta minus u delta less than delta and mod of f x delta minus f u delta is greater than or equal to f sin l not and third statement says there exist n there exist n f sin l not greater than 0 such that and the two sequences and two uh, sequences 
say x n and u n in a in a such that such that limit of x n minus u n over n is 0 and mod of f of x n minus f of u n is greater than equal to f sin or not for all n and belongs to capital n. Let us see, let us see this what is the so uniform continuity criteria says if suppose function is not uniform then by the definition of not uniform means a function is said to be uniform continuous if at over the set a if for each epsilon there exists a delta which depends only on epsilon not on the delta such that the difference of f x minus f u is can be made less than epsilon provided the point are in the delta neighborhood. So, if the function is not uniformly continuous, it means this condition will be violated. If we choose the point in the neighborhood of delta, the images of this, the fluctuation may not be less than epsilon, it can exceed to any number, arbitrary number epsilon not. So, that is why what he says is that if f is not uniformly continuous, then there exists an epsilon not such that whenever the point x and u are in the delta neighborhood the corresponding images exceed the that bound epsilon naught greater than m. Similarly, this is in a Cauchy definition this is Hanis definition instead of choosing the two arbitrary point if we picked up the two sequence x n by n which are tending to 0 the limiting both are uh, difference of this is tending to 0 means x n and u n are very close to each other as n is sufficiently large then but the corresponding images is not close it greater than equal to some positive number if sign or not then we say the function f is not uniformly continuous ok we got this. Now, this criteria can be applied very directly suppose I apply this function to show g x which is 1 by x is not uniformly continuous is not uniformly continuous on the set A where x is greater than 0 set of all real number n. So, what we do is we have to pick up the two arbitrary sequence. So, let x n I choose the 1 by n and u n I take to be 1 over n plus 1 both are in A and the difference of these two sequences obviously x n minus u n this goes to 0 as n tends to infinity, but what is our g of x n minus g of u n this mod is nothing but what g of x n is nothing but n plus 1 minus n that is 1 which does not go to 0 in fact it is greater than equal to any number epsilon or not therefore g is not uniformly continuous. So, g is not <coughs> uniformly continuous that is what. Now, uniform continuity uh, trans uh, uh, when it is function is defined over a closed interval and if function is continuous then it will be uniform continuous. So, this result is known as the uniform uniform continuity theorem continuity theorem. The theorem says let i be a closed bounded interval closed bounded interval and let f and let f which is a mapping from I uh, mapping from I to R I to R B continuous on I then F is 
uniformly continuous. Uniformly continuous on I. So, what he said if the function f which is continuous over a closed interval bound closed and bounded interval then function must be uniformly continuous. So, suppose f is not uniformly continuous on i. So, I can use one of the criteria which I listed earlier I will take the in the form of the sequence okay, by present. Now, so what we say? So, by the previous result or previous theorems where the criteria are there, we can choose then there exist a epsilon naught greater than 0 and two sequences xn and un in I such that the difference between these two that is limit of this is going to 0 means difference is very very small say 1 by n and but the mod of f x n minus f u n this difference exceed by this epsilon naught for all n. So, this is by the criteria when non uniformly continuous criteria from here we are getting this one. Okay. Now, since our since i is bounded and the sequence x n x n and u n and u n both are the sequences belonging to belong to i. So, by Bolzano Lestas theorem so by Bolzano Westras theorem every bounded sequence has a convergence of sequence. So, there is there is convergent subsequences mm, there is convergent subsequences say x n k and there is convergent subsequence let, let us take first this part then we can take belongs to this. So, let there is j convergent subsequence x n of x n of x n that that converges to an element z to an element say z belongs to i z that converges to z. Now, we wanted to show z is a point in i which follows because i is closed since i is closed. So, all the limit point of a sequence in I must be point in J. So, this and also all the sequence x and k lies between the lower and the upper bound of this uh, interval. So, by the sandwich theorem the limit of this sequence x and k must be the point in I. So, this implies if since I is closed the limit point limit point z belongs to I. Okay. Similarly, similarly we can say we similarly we can also so we claim we also claim that the sequence u n will have a subsequence u n k in I whose limit point belongs to I limit point limit point belongs to i, but the limit point of u n k and x n k will be the same, but limit point of u n k and the limit point of z uh, say uh, x n k will be the same. The reason is because because if I consider the u n k minus z then this can be written as the u n k minus x n k plus x n k minus z. Now, this term is less than or equal to k by condition which we are choosing because both are in a and we are choosing the interval 
neighborhood is such a way so that this is less than equal to k and this converges to z this is the limit point of this so it goes to 0 so s tends to total tends to 0 therefore both will have the same limit point once they are having the same limit point therefore f so f is so z belongs so f is continuous now further since f is continuous at z at z then both the sequences then f of x k n x n k and f of u n k must converge to f z because x n k goes to z so f of x n k will go to f of z u n k goes to z so f of u n k will also go to a because f is continuous so once they are continuous but the given but the given condition is given hypothesis is that mod of f x uh, f x n min f x n minus f of u n is greater than equal to f sin or not this is given so the contradiction and contradiction is our because of a long assumption that function is not uniformly continuous so therefore f is uniformly uniformly continuous over a that shows the result okay so this proves that uniform continuity now this is one more results which we say then we come to the uh, if theorem is if f is a mapping from a to r is uniformly continuous is uniformly continuous on a subset on a subset a of r on a subset a of r and if x n and if x n is a Cauchy sequence is a Cauchy sequence in a then f of x n this sequence is a Cauchy sequence in r it means if f is a uniformly continuous function then it will transfer the Cauchy sequence to the Cauchy sequence the proof is let x n be a Cauchy sequence Cauchy sequence in a okay we want it to and f is given to be and f is given to be uniform continuous continuous over a so by definition of the continuity let for a given f signal greater than 0 uh, we can identify a delta there exists a delta which depends only on f signal greater than 0 such that the mod x minus u is less than delta such that for uh, if x comma y uh, x comma u belongs to a x comma u belongs to a satisfy satisfy this condition then f of x minus f of u this is less than f sin okay so let it be one now it is given the sequence x n is a Cauchy sequence so since x n is a Cauchy sequence so by definition of Cauchy so for uh, so for a given f signal greater than 0 for given uh, delta uh, so uh, we can say there exist uh, for given delta greater than 0 there exists an h which depends on delta such that the difference between any two arbitrary term of the sequence after a certain stage can be made less than delta for all m n which are greater than or equal to h this is two okay now by this same delta 
if by the same choice of delta since x m n is less than this so if you take x equal to x n u equal to x n so from 1 it follows that f of x n minus f of x m x of x n minus f of x n mod of this can, will be less than epsilon for all n m greater than equal to h this shows the sequence f x n n is a Cauchy sequence in R. So, that is proved the result for okay. Now, we come to uh, the thing which is say our uh, absolute continuity that is the new cons absolute continuity absolute continuity a function f x a function f x is said to be is said to be absolutely absolutely continuous in the interval say a b if corresponding if corresponding to an arbitrary arbitrarily chosen positive arbitrary chosen positive number f sin another positive number positive number delta can be sign can be determined 